A Gothic cathedral is a marvel of design and engineering. Vaulted ceilings reaching toward the heavens, beautiful stained glass windows. But probably the most recognizable feature of a Gothic cathedral is the flying buttress. So what is a flying buttress? How does it work and why is it one of the key features of a Gothic cathedral? Now, to understand why the flying buttress was so important, first of all, you have to understand that the Gothic cathedral was all about height and light. This means large open spaces inside. In order to accomplish this, the flying buttress was a necessity. Now this concept was not new as the flying buttress had been around for some time, but never had they been used to the extent that they were used in these Gothic cathedrals. So let's talk about what it is, how it works, and why it was so important to the overall design of these cathedrals. So this is an old drawing of a Gothic cathedral. So when we talk about flying buttresses, this is really what we're talking about here. These supports here over on the side. The main reason why these flying buttresses are necessary is because of these arches here that make up the vault of the ceiling in these cathedrals. And really what it is, it's the, the forces that are exerted because of, of this arch. The weight of the ceiling's forces are translated through this arch and kind of down in this direction and really result in a lateral force against this external wall of the church. So because of that, you need some sort of way to keep the wall from falling over, right? So historically, what they would do is they would just build a thicker wall and they would add what they call a buttress on the outside of this wall that would go all the way down to the ground. Now, you can't do that in this case because we want to have these side aisles here. And these side aisles are, again, part of what allows the church to be so open and big and bright. And you can see here in this video, there's not even a wall here. It's just a series of columns that provides support for the roof and the rest of the structure. So it really allowed the complete removal of walls on the inside of the church. Otherwise, there would be a wall here that would just go all the way back and it would just be a big box of a church. So because they couldn't make this... They couldn't make this wall thicker. What they had to do was find a way to translate this lateral force out from the wall and into something else, right? So, which is called a buttress, right? So they have these these pieces here. That force goes this way. The force travels along here. And it goes into this big buttress column here, which then provides all the right forces because of the mass of this column to resist the lateral forces coming from this arch. So really what it does is between this side and this side, it provides support for the inside of the building. It's just now provided on the outside. So you can see why people call it an external skeleton because that's really what it is. And I think they really just add to the overall look of a cathedral. The Gothic cathedrals are just so interesting to me, especially as an engineer. Most of the stuff still has a design purpose. It still has a utilitarian purpose that is just also really cool to look at. For example, at Rem Cathedral, the drainage from the roof on these upper flying portions here had gutter systems in it. So the water would collect up here, would go through a hole, would come down here, and it would go down some downspouts out here so it would get away from the building, which again is a really good use of, of design and engineering. And these pinnacles here, again, they're beautiful. They're very decorative, but they also serve a purpose. The point of these pinnacles, and, and there is some controversy over this, but this is where I fall out. Um, the, the mass of these pinnacles provide enough downward force into this portion of, of the buttress column that prevents these lateral forces here from shearing off this portion of the wall. And I think that that helps. It, it provides enough basically compressive force inside the masonry so that uh, those lateral forces don't knock the buttress over and they're just translated down into the ground. Because one of the things about masonry and stone buildings, the even when they have uh, cement in between the blocks, that cement doesn't provide, it's not glue, it doesn't provide um, a support against lateral forces. Masonry always has to be in compression. And, and as long as you maintain the forces in compression, it's going to stay standing. The minute you get lateral forces or anything pulling apart in tension, the whole thing collapses. Now I want to talk a little bit about how this design feature was received at the time. There was a sentiment against it, calling it propped up architecture and decrying the fact that it brought the engineering to the outside of the building. It was compared to putting the skeleton on the outside. While this may have been a negative view at the time, this is what I love about these cathedrals. The engineering is striking. Being able to see the skeleton of the building is an amazing feature of these buildings, and I think it makes them even more beautiful and unique. Just look at these flying buttresses at Rem Cathedral. They're not just utilitarian. They are an important part of the design aesthetic of the building. Look at how they were even able to incorporate statues into the buttresses. They are part of the beauty and art that is the design of the cathedral. I just can't imagine these cathedrals being nearly as grand without them. 